borrow uh, Steve's phraseology, it's, it's free fall. <laughs> uh, but no, I, I think the events of the last couple of days are really significant in Argentina because oftentimes in emerging markets what happens is things evolve from a currency crisis to a political crisis. And I think what we're seeing right now happening there is becoming somewhat of a political crisis. So let's just rewind back and take a look at how we got here in the first place. I would say there are two things going on. The first is the broader macro context. Fed is tightening, reducing the size of the balance sheet, quantitative tightening. All of those things are leading to redistributional flows around the world. People, investors are pulling out cash from high carry markets such as Argentina and redeploying it back uh, into the United States where obviously interest rates are moving higher. But what that means is the dollar has been strengthening and countries with high external financing needs such as Argentina, such as Turkey, are the ones that are, are right in the line of fire. So we're beginning to see that. And actually, there was a, a good chart out by Morgan Stanley I was looking at yesterday, which uh, analyzes the uh, reserve ratios versus their external financing flows. And right at the bottom of that, Turkey and Argentina. So no wonder those, those two were the first ones to react. Secondly, on the micro, what many people are saying is that President Macri could have enacted a lot of the economic reforms quicker than he has. He's taken a little bit of time. Uh, they had the parliamentary elections last year. He could have used that opportunity to introduce reforms at a quicker pace. He hasn't. And as a consequence of that, what we've seen is inflation get out of control. Even before the currency devaluation this month, inflation was running at 30%. They're running behind on interest rates. They should have hiked sooner as well. And what you get is a request for help from the IMF. Um, you get a, a emergency hike of 15 basis points from 45 to 60 percent. That is the highest in the world. Inflation is running at, you know, pick a number now, around 40 percent. And investors are really questioning whether or not they can bring this back under control again. And I think where he's lacking is they haven't really spelled out a proper economic reform plan. All we know so far is that they have requested this IMF help. We know that Christine Lagarde is open to the idea of bringing forward the help, but we don't necessarily know what the government plan is to bring things back in order other than just reacting to the devaluation sure. that's going on in the currency. A excellent summary. Um, can I just ask you, um, yes, of course, we have to look at Argentina and they have to be masters of their own destiny. So we have to say what you have done as a government, as a country, and what you haven't done. But how much can we also point the finger of blame at the fickle nature uh, of hedge fund hotel type funds as well? Because, I mean, it was June the 20th, 2017, when the world was ignoring this desk, when we said how utter, I'll try and not swear because it's a Friday and there's children watching, uh, <laughs> what utter jibber jabber, what rubbish, what mm. cock a hoop rubbish it was, poppycock, there you go, that it was to issue a 7.125% coupon on a 100 year paper. And there was strong demand, and the Argentinians shifted $2.75 billion worth of this stuff. No one listened to Sport Box Europe, no one ever would on that kind of thing. But, but that, the fickle nature of that money that goes in, that goes out, we have to point the finger at some of this, don't we? Absolutely. But again, that is a function of the central bank policy. That is a function of the Fed. A, these are the inadvertent consequences of leaving interest rates low for a very, very, very long time and pumping trillions worth of liquidity into the global system. That money has to find a home. You look at Argentina before all of this really kicked off and you're looking at real, real interest rates of double digit returns. You're looking at 10%. Um, so in an environment where you have an option of getting 1% or 10%, well, okay, money will go to the 10% before it all goes horribly wrong when the dollar starts appreciating. There was and a that's lovely exactly quote at the time that said, I don't understand why people are buying this. There hasn't been, you try and find a 20-year period in Argentinian history where there hasn't been some form of default and you'll struggle. The, um, the IMF story, I think, is interesting here because mm. we, we look at the IMF as a backstop for countries that are in trouble. Mm. Um, what complicates this slightly is when you look at the Turkey situation, the Donald Trump involvement in a row with Erdogan almost prevents them, I think, bringing in the IMF at this point. It, it, does Argentina have a free run at this, or ha are there simmering issues between uh, Mr. Macri and the United States that may preclude emergency help? It's an interesting question because I think if you look back to when this route started, it was around the time of the steel and aluminium tariffs. So it coincided with that and with the strength of US dollar. But since then, actually, the uh, Argentina has been carved out. They've been exempted uh, from some of the tariffs that the US were looking to apply. <coughs> 
and so uh, there's less of that angle. But again, coming back to the IMF, the IMF will be insistent on further reforms. And so what Mr. Macri has done so far, they've somewhat raised the prices on a few utilities or removed the subsidies that the previous government had before, um, which obviously was very he heavily subsidized, very populist government. Uh, and they raised the prices on electricity and water, but there's so many other things that they need to do. There's pension reform, there's social security reform, there are uh, civil servants, uh, they need to reduce taxes across the board, uh, sorry, reduce uh, salaries across the board, and he's been reluctant to do that. And many now are saying that it was not wise of him because he should have used the opportunity when he first came in and after winning the parliamentary elections last year to get this done. Now he's looking at a 2019 election, the tide is turning against him, poverty levels have actually gone up when he's pledged to get them lower, inflation rates are getting out of control, and the person on the streets, what they see is that their country is yet again going to the IMF and yet again teetering with the prospect of default. People are not happy. Hey everybody, it's Hadley Gamble from our new CNBC Middle East Bureau in Abu Dhabi. Thanks for stopping by. Now to watch more, you can try one of the videos that just popped up on your screen. And don't forget to subscribe.